Bryant, and you're watching Colonial Sports Center. Back to you, Vanessa. Who's Vanessa? Coming up on Colonial Sports Center, that's Mezzi and Uigwe, that's Karan Abraham, and that's Dallas Green. All three are highlighted. Dallas is ready. This is Dallas Green watching Colonial Sports Center. <laughs> So if you think for one minute we're going away, you're sadly mistaken. It'll take every ounce of energy we have. I've never been this happy to hear Knights of Sidonia. Welcome back to another edition of Colonial Sports Center. I'm Chris Paginski. Alongside for his second straight week at the desk, Brooks Bratton. I don't know exactly who he paid off, but here he is again. And Brooksy, we've got a bit of a different show this week. We do not a lot of highlights, but instead we're going to take some time to profile some uh, certain basketball players. That's right, Brooksy. On tonight's show, we'll examine the finer points of the game of softball in a piece that we hope teaches you a few things. And then take a look at how spring practices are shaping up as we get a preview for the football season from Shadre King. But we'll also be reviewing as we take a look back at yet another magical basketball season and foray into the NCAA tournament. So keep it here for a look longingly into the past and optimistically into the future. Tonight we found that having a single colonial spotlight would be inappropriate, so we decided instead that we should have two of them. So we take an in-depth look at two of the players on the men's basketball team. One, a senior who has proven himself many times in the clutch, and another, a freshman who will be a leader in the years ahead. We speak of none other than Dallas Green and Karan Abraham, and we'll have two colonial spotlights later on in the show, but first, the colonial update. The men's lacrosse team just got back from a trip to Louisville to take on Bellarmine, which unfortunately proved to be fruitless as the Colonials fell to the hosts 18-15. The Colonials took a 14-10 lead into the fourth quarter before the Knights went on an 8-1 run. Trevor Moore had four goals and an assist, while Kiel Matisse had three goals and three assists. The Colonials' next game and start of a five-game homestand is this Saturday against Jacksonville. Faring better than their male counterparts is the women's lacrosse team who were on a three-game winning streak. Their last two games were this past weekend and both were wins at home as they defeated Long Island 15-8 on Friday and then sank the Seahawks 14-2 on Sunday night. The Colonials are now 4-3 on the year and their next game is tomorrow as they hit the road to take on the Monmouth Hawks. The 2010 softball season is underway, so we thought it'd be a good idea to give some newcomers to the sport and to the team a bit of an introduction. Earlier on this week, the Colonials' Kayla Crooks taught us a thing or two about a thing or two regarding the game of softball. I'm Kayla Crooks, and I'm a junior on the Robert Morris softball team, and I'm here to tell you a few differences between baseball and softball. To start, we use a much bigger ball, and our bats are a lot lighter. Uh, our field dimensions are also a lot different than baseball, too. Our fences are a lot smaller, our base paths are a lot shorter, and our pitching distance is a lot shorter, which that enables our game to move much faster than baseball does. We'll get through a seven inning game in probably about an hour and a half, where baseball takes three hours for a nine inning game. Uh, pitching is also very big, or very different between baseball and softball. In baseball, they obviously throw overhand, where in softball we use the underhand windmill motion, which that allows our pitchers to throw as much as they want. They can throw every day, where in baseball they have to take two or three days off between games. Uh, which that is really good for us because we only have two pitchers and we can't really take two days off between games. Our pitchers also throw in the mid-60s, where in baseball that's kind of equivalent to throwing in the mid-90s. In softball we use what we call small ball a lot more than baseball does, which that's a lot of bunting and slapping. Uh, that enables our faster players to just lay down a bunt, lay down a soft hit, use, use their speed and be able to get down the base pass a lot quicker. 
finally, in softball, we are a lot more vocal than baseball. We, there's a lot of cheering, a lot of talking going on all the time. Baseball, they're a lot more quiet. In softball, it's just it's part of the culture. It's what the game is. We're not trying to be annoying or anything, but it's just how the game's played. Now, because softball is a spring sport, you may not know our team as well as you know the men's basketball team, the women's basketball team, or either ice hockey team. But a few fun facts about our team include that we are the smallest team in the Northeast Conference, both in numbers and in size. Uh, 90% of our team wears custom Oakley sunglasses. We, our, our outfielder's motto is take down fences. We have unusually large winter jackets. Our uniforms are either way too small or way too big. And finally, we refer to our coach as Craig Daddy. I'm Kayla Crooks, and this has been a look into RMU softball. As the weather gets a bit warmer, the Colonials football team is taking to the field to get a little practice in before next season's opener. To get a little preview of the upcoming season, our own Chelsea Fry talked to the Colonials Shadre King. The Colonial football team got off to a tough start last year, but won their final five games to close out the season. Now, to help us take an early look at what's coming up next season, Shadre King joins us. So what can you tell me about the lights that are coming to the Joe Walton Stadium this coming year? Um, I actually didn't know about the lights until uh, I came back this semester. Um, Coach told us that we'd be getting lights. I'm kind of excited about the lights because um, in the fall we usually don't get a chance to, you know, practice because it gets dark early. So um, I'm kind of excited now that we get to practice at night. Be, feel like a high school, have a high school feeling, especially the games too. You know, a lot of people I think will come out more because it's at night and stuff like that. So I'm pretty happy about it. Okay, and um, what can you tell us about the incoming freshmen for next year? Do they look like players to watch, or? Um, yeah, I, I, I feel that they're players to watch. We got, um, our coach told us we have a really good uh, freshman class coming in. Um, I'm kind of excited about it because, you know, last year we had a pretty good freshman class, and they're actually improving, and, you know, they're finding their own ways and finding their own space on the team. So I'm, I'm excited to see what, you know, what kind of work that the coaches have done this summer. So I'm excited. Okay, and, and what about your returning players? Um, they're going to be a good force on your team this year? Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Um, we got our whole O-line back. We got a lot of receivers back. We got our running backs back. Um, we got Jeff back, our quarterback. So, I mean, our team is real young, so I'm kind of excited of, of you know, what we're going to do. We're going to be a, a force to be working with because uh, we're a young team and, you know, we got a lot of players and we got a lot of playmakers and we're going to have a really good season next year. And if this season is a winning season, you get a bid to the playoffs? Yes. Yes. Um, usually, uh, you know, if we win the, the uh, NEC, we would just get a ring and that would be it. But now, you know, if we win the NEC, we have a chance to go to the national championship and, you know, win the national championship. And that would be a really good thing for the school. Be great. Yeah. Represent the school. The Colonials are currently holding spring practices and will resume their regular schedule in the fall, this time under the lights. Chelsea Fry, Colonial Sports Center. Thanks, Chelsea. And B-Block's coming up, Brooksy, and the B stands for basketball. That's right, Chris. We'll turn our focus to three very important pieces of the men's basketball team after the break. Now, which snacks should our viewers grab? How about some Fig Newtons? Basketball's next. Tapes operator, it's what I do, Colonial Sports Center. I'm Jeremy Martin, graphics operator, and you're watching Colonial Sports Center. <laughs> it's, it's gone now, there's no serious take now. Chris Baginski, eye candy, Colonial Sports Center. <laughs> I'm Justin Luteran, and I'm not good enough for Josh Elsass. How's that? I'm Josh Elsass, the producer, and you're watching Colonial Sports Center. Yeah, you have a purple shirt. <laughs> <laughs> well, er, er, Mom, er, you put that er, away. You put that away. Confiscate that camera. <laughs> that got me kicked off air. <laughs> Hi, oh, I see uh, Mario, uh, uh, Sports Center uh, Colonial Edition. Oi! <laughs> <laughs> I'm Justin Luteran, and I have facial hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
Take a good look. Another year, another fine season for the men's basketball team. Yesterday, a pep rally was held to celebrate the successful season, and we were able to grab a word with a few of the players of the back-to-back -back NEC men's basketball champions. 12 hours, three buses, and 164 screaming fans are what drove the Robert Morris Colonials to such a hard-fought game against second seed Villanova. Although the Colonials were defeated in the final seconds of overtime, their season was nothing to be ashamed of. Coach Rice couldn't have said it better himself when he announced that RMU won that game with spirit and pride, not the Villanova Wildcats. Yesterday, the RMU cafeteria was overflowing with students and faculty to give a big thank you for such an amazing season. The best thing that this team did uh, is uh, showed up with the mentality of uh, we're not just going to go out of here and try hard tonight. Uh, the thing that what most excited people was the mentality whether it was Jay Wright who talked to me after the game or uh, the other coaches around the country, your team showed up with the mentality that they were going to win a basketball game. It was a great experience uh, to be able to stay in the game and actually lead the entire game. It's a wonderful feeling. It gives all our guys a bit of confidence behind them. So it's, it was a wonderful feeling. He's got it in his hands. A little pin down series, but it's the perimeter guys. On the oh, yeah! For three. And a foul. Woo! The students, their, their, their bodies are painted, they're, they're standing up, it's, uh, you know, the Villanova people are standing our hands. It, you have no idea what that did to us and, and, our, and our university. So, again, we want to appreciate 20 hours on a bus is no, no easy thing. Uh, Rice is a very intense coach, and I'm a very intense player, so when he gets intense, it, like, makes, more, makes me more intense. Right, Coach Rice, because uh, with all this, uh, Yelling and screaming and enthusiasm. Uh, it's just he was a, a great guy, and uh, he brought the best out of his players. So he was the main guy of this team. Again, thanks for coming out. Thanks for my 164 people and everyone else who skipped class on that Thursday. We appreciate it. Uh, it's actually a dream come true. It's a wonderful thing uh, to win and uh, be a big part of this team as a freshman and, and start and win all and win NEC Rookie of the Year, all that stuff. It's a big accomplishment, a uh, confidence builder for me for next year, going into next season. Oh, uh, man, I'm very proud of him. Uh, played hard this season, played real hard. At the, in the beginning of the season, we was like, we wasn't together and stuff, but toward the end, we started to join together, and we played hard. With the 2009-2010 season officially over, RMU is looking forward to nothing but triumph in the future. Although seniors will be lost, rivalries will continue to flourish, and the fan base will grow. As for the 2011 NCAA tournament, watch out, because Robert Morris will surely be back next year for more. Jackie King, Colonial Sports Center. Dallas Green has carved out a niche in the folklore of Bobby Moe basketball with his big game performances the past two seasons, so it was only appropriate that we return the favor for his fine play as we shine upon him the Colonial Spotlight. Yeah, I always listen to the same song over and over. It's a, it's a slow jam by uh, Babyface, but I don't know why I always listen to slow jams. I got a couple of nicknames. I got D Green, Dallo, uh, and Young Low. Seems like yesterday we used to rock the show. I laced the track, you locked the flow. So far from hanging on the block of dope. No uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Indiana Pacers, even though they're not doing so well, I still love them. Um, I used to watch it all the time, and uh, actually when I was, um, I say, five years old, my dad taught me the game. My major is uh, hospitality and tourism because uh, I wanted to work in casinos and hotels. One of my good friends, he came to school to here, and I decided to go with him. I said I looked up my sister. I mean, she's a positive role model. Uh, she did good in school, and uh, she did good in volleyball, too. Uh, I like to chill with my friends. I like to go out to the mall. I like to go to clubs. Pretty much it.
This season, a team facing adversity following the loss of one of their senior leaders had to have somebody step up. Many of the men on the team played their needed part, but going beyond expectations was a freshman by the name of Karan Abraham, the subject of our second Colonial Spotlight. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Far too kind. Uh, uh, yeah. I started watching my uncles at a young age, around like five, and then around like six years old, I started playing and playing the games and organized basketball games. Yeah, hear me rappers like Han G rapping his prime. I'm young HO, raps great from dead. Back to take over the globe, now break bread. I'm in Boeing Jets, Global Express. Out the country, but the blueberries still connect. On the low, but the guy got a triple deck. Who you gonna find over the head? I shoot, try to shoot at least 200, 300 shots before a game. You can't replace him with cheap imitations of this generation. Mainly because I, I feel I'm going to be in the sports business somewhere. And probably uh, just because I can also open up a, other business, restaurants, whatever, with a business major also. That, so that's why. What you made me do. Look what I made for you. Knew if I paid my dues, how will they pay you? When you first come in the game, they try to play you. Then you drive a couple of hits. Look how they wait to you. From R.C. to Madison Square. To the only thing that uh, it's a family here. Uh, I love the campus. Uh, the support here as far as the, the students. They're, they're, they're great, and uh, the coaching staff is wonderful. And it's a winning program, so why not be a part of a winning program? And I need you to remember one thing. One thing. I came, I saw, I conquered. The record sale, sold out concerts. Time is being what you want me to be. Feeling so faithless, lost under the surface. My uncles, uh, they played Division One basketball. One of them played Division One basketball, then he stopped for a little bit. Uh, but they were my inspiration to uh, continue to carry the Abraham name, and I, that's what I'm trying to do right now. I'm Karan Abraham, and you're watching Colonial Sports Center. team a third is with us right now in studio but before we have a word with him let's take a look at the best plays of senior guard Mezzi Nwigwe Joining me now in studio, the man of the hour, senior guard, Mezzi Nwigwe. Mez, thanks for being here. How you doing? First off, as I said earlier, you are a senior. This was your senior season. Coming into it, did you have any personal goals for yourself that you had set? Well, as a team, we, we set a goal to improve every day. That's our first. We have three goals. One is to improve every day. 
The second one is to win the regular season, and the third one was to go to the NCAA tournament. So as an individual and as a senior, mine was basically to help improve my teammates, especially the younger ones, like, because we have six freshmen this year. So as a senior, I just try to take, be the leader and, and try to get everybody better. You mentioned leading. Was there any difference, any mindset difference going into the game against Villanova this year as opposed to Michigan State last year? Uh, yeah, well, everybody said that because this year, like, you know, last year we were just content that we made it. You know, we, we got there and, you know, we in the NCAA tournament. We enjoyed the experience. But this year it was more like, first of all, we was happy about the matchup. You know, Villanova, they're a great team, but they're guards. They play as mostly guard-oriented. So, so it was a good matchup. And then we, like, we felt that we could beat them. You know, we have a couple players on, a, on our team that played with them in high school and stuff. So we knew how they play. So we felt like we could actually win this game. Now, you mentioned a team like Villanova. Scotty Reynolds started the game on the bench, not starting. Did that help you guys out as far as your game plan going forward? Um, I mean, I, we followed the same game plan. I mean, it, it was a boost for us knowing that they didn't have their best score in the game at the beginning. But, you know, we played it the same. It didn't really matter to us. Now, going into overtime, did your mindset change at all knowing that the stakes were a little bit higher in overtime as they were during the regular part of the game? Uh, I think in overtime, even though they got on a little on a little run. I think we stuck together, like we stuck more together in overtime than we did during the game because we knew that they was going to punch back. We didn't know when and they kind of punched us back at the end of the game to make it go to overtime. But, you know, just going overtime, it just helped us even stay more together no matter what, how the situation happened. Now, after the game, obviously you guys were disappointed, but were you also proud as a team as of what you had just accomplished against Villanova? I couldn't be more proud of my team. Like from the managers to the coach Rice, like I, everybody, like we all stuck together throughout the whole season. We you know we started rough at certain times. We had rocky moments, but it was just a great time. I couldn't be more proud than everybody on my team. You mentioned Coach Rice. What would you say is the greatest attribute of your head coach? <sighs> Man, there's so many. Like he's he's just he brings you energy. Like he yells at you so much sometimes, and you know sometimes he get on your last nerve, but. You know, he, he gets to the point where he makes you play better. You know, he, he make you want to prove him wrong, you know, because mm -hmm. sometimes he get on you so bad that you want to prove him wrong that, that you just play at your best. And we all love that about him. Now, what do you think as far as his team moving forward? What do you guys think of the rumors that he may leave? Uh, I mean, that's the talk of the town right now. But, uh, I mean, you know, this is a business. You know, you, all you could do is hope for the best. And I, I don't want him to leave because... I like the, the legacy that he's building in this program, but you know, it's a business and he got to do what he got to do to provide for his family. So, you know, we're all happy about it. Whatever, whatever decision he decides to make, we'll, we'll be behind him. Now, Mez, we do have a trivia question coming up. I asked you before the break if you knew the answer. You said you didn't. Oh. We'll, t we'll take a look at the trivia question. Career steals, does Mez in have 95 from 06 to 2010? Not bad. Also, 231 career assists, 814 career points. Mez, you will be missed. Thank you for your four years of service on the Colonial roster. Great job, as always. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Coming up next, thanks again to Mezzi and Wigway for being here. But you've got just enough time to grab some double stuffed Oreos and then come on back for double the show-stopping plays. Chris and I will take a look at the best moments of the winter sports teams here at Robert Morris, so do stay tuned. Hello, boys and girls. This is your old pal, Stinky Wizzlety. This is a song about a whale. No! This is a song about being happy. That's right. It's the Happy, Happy, Joy, Joy song. Happy, happy, joy, joy, 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 joy. I don't think you're happy enough. That's right. I'll teach you to be happy. I'll teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Now, boys and girls, let's try it again. Happy, happy, joy, joy, 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 joy. If and you ain't the granddaddy of all liars, the little critters of nature, they don't know that they're ugly. That's very funny. 
a fly marrying a bumblebee. Happy, happy, joy, joy, happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, 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 joy, joy, joy. And I've never been happier to hear plug in, baby, either. The top five. Moments of the winter sports season. Well, this one didn't exactly happen on campus. Brian McLaughlin made 3,809 saves in her time here with the Colonials. And then she later made the Olympic hockey team for the United States and picked up a silver medal as her memento from Vancouver. Number four, number four. Oh, well, Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr. The Colonials and the Wildcats in the NCAA tournament. Game of the century for the Robert Morris Colonials. Karan Abraham sinking threes like they're going out of style. And then in overtime, Mezzie Nwigwe, the star of our show tonight with the steal, gets the layup to go off the glass. It was a heartbreaker in the end for the Colonials, but no doubt one of the bright spots of the season in Robert Morris history. That steal went towards our trivia question today. It did. Number three. We go from the men's basketball team to the women's basketball team, who also had a very good season. They only had one loss all year within the NEC conference. They unfortunately did not fare quite as well in the NEC tournament, but they're a very young team, and they will certainly be back next year with a vengeance. Congrats to head coach Sal, NEC coach of the year. Number two, Colonials and Red Hawks. Hockey at Mellon Arena, the final college hockey showcase in the history of the Igloo. And the Colonials knock off number one ranked at the time, Miami of Ohio Red Hawks. Not just once on this Friday night, but two times in the same weekend. Stefan Saltoro with a goal there. Robert Morris with the sweep of Miami. Memorable way for the Mellon Arena to go out in college hockey. But this is the game of the year you want to factor in colonial victories because it was RMU versus Quinnipiac in the NEC championship game and it was similar to last year very close game some controversial calls as well but the Colonials came out on top to become the first back-to-back -back NEC champions since Ryder in 1993 and 1994 but don't forget about other great RMU programming, such as RMU Live, broadcasting every Tuesday at 5.30. It's your campus, world, and local news headquarters right here on RMU TV Channel 98. And also every Friday at noon, you can catch Campus Stories, an in-depth interview show hosted by Mr. Begensky, produced Ooh. by Clark Cairns, discussing many hidden topics here on campus. Later on Friday evening and Saturday as well, catch Prime Cuts Theater with Brian Spencer, Ron McKenzie, and Michael Gabriel as they talk about all the happenings in the world of movies. And over on the radio side, catch three great shows. In case you haven't had enough with me, Ice Talk Tuesdays and Thursdays at 4.30 discussing all oh, it is the NHL. Women CSR with Ashley Friday talking Colonial women's sports and Colonial Sports Radio with Ernie Bernard and Chris Paginski once again with the lowdown on RMU Athletics. Dude, seriously check out RMU CSR. CSR. All the okay. great shows that we have here, RMU Live and all that. Well, Brooksy, what do you think about this week's show? Not bad. A little bit different without the highlights, but... Having a student athlete, especially a star athlete in the studio, always helps things go smoothly. Yeah, and I think that it's, uh, it's something that we do to help people stay interested because we don't do the same show every single week. We change things up like this, and we decided to kind of take a different approach this week. And I hope that everybody who is watching enjoyed it, appreciated it. Keep you on your toes here at CSC. Mm -hmm. And we're out. We would like just to thank all the teams and the coaches for their accessibility as well as Marty Golosi and the entire RMU Athletic Department because without you folks, we would not be able to do what we do. So, bye-bye. Good night, Brazil. Good night.